What is going on, Crimson City? My name is Crimson Seabed. I'm bringing you guys today our APA draft analysis. Your Detroit Steel Wings are contending in the American Pokemon Association for their season three, their third season. We're going to be hopefully taking this team up to the top and winning this league. If you guys don't know anything about this, we recently just did a live draft stream over on A Drive's Twitch. Uh, it is for a competitive Pokemon league, if you guys aren't familiar with that. Pretty much a group of 12 to 16 coaches, more or less, get together, and we draft Pokemon in a snake-style thing where, you know, for one person gets one pick, we go all the way down the list, and then that person comes back, and we pick our Pokemon, we choose 11 Pokemon. Each week, we go up against a different team that we have to build the best six for our team to go up against any combination of their 11 Pokemon. There's six of 11 Pokemon, as it is. I feel like a lot of people are familiar with draft league format stuff right now, but I figured I'd toss that out there in case anybody is new. I know I do have a lot of viewers that aren't the most into competitive Pokemon, so I feel like just kind of giving leading with that little segue right there. I feel like that's pretty good. Uh, we had eighth overall in the draft, and there's a lot of Pokemon that I was looking at originally, and a lot of Pokemon, you know, just kind of scouring the tiers. The APA had a different set of tiering than what I'm familiar with, with things like WBE, with things like GBA, with things like, you know, um, P4G, other leagues that we've been a part of. You know, a li little bit different tiering. Their tiering seemed to be a bit more st structured towards like a personalized Smogon tiering, how Smogon tiers adjust based off of overall usage. If a Pokemon hadn't been used in previous seasons, they kind of knocked it down a little bit, just kind of see it. So, it, to, to my understanding. Um, so... Coming up first here, the reason I say that is because the tiers were a little bit different, so a lot of Pokemon were taken in certain spots where you wouldn't necessarily see them. Uh, first overall I grabbed was Exodrill, so there's one good thing to say about Exodrill. Uh, Steel types are great in the format, obviously people, so there's always the trend of people, you know, Dragon types are very overpowered, you need a strong Steel type or a strong Fairy type to be able to check them. Typically Dragon types get Earthquake, which will knock Steel types, you know, senseless, so you want a strong Fairy to do that. What counters strong Fairy types, strong Poison types, or strong Steel types? Considering poison types aren't super prevalent as far as really good offensive ones, um, steel types are a bit more managed to find, and Excadrill, in my opinion, is one of the better steel types coming out of the for the overall tiering. Uh, so first up here, we do have Serrated the Excadrill. He is going to be bringing a lot this season. I've used Excadrill once before. I believe it was Season 4 of the Pokemon Global League. I used Excadrill, and I used Excadrill without sand, actually. I think I ended up free agenting for Hippopotas, like, way later in the league. But I just grabbed Excadrill as it was. Um, it's a really awesome Pokemon. It's got good base stats, 110 in HP, 135 attack, and then 88 in the speed. You guys can see that with a max speed, nature does bring it up to about 154. This is a Wi-Fi league. All Pokemon are, our battles are being done at level 50 as opposed to level 100. So all my stat talks will be talked about as level 50 as opposed to max level 100. So it's got three awesome abilities. Obviously, two of them, you know, you can abuse in the sand with being Sand Rush. Uh, when Sandstorm is up, Pokemon speed is doubled, makes for a really good sweeper. Um... Sand Force, Ground Rock, and Steel type attacks do an extra 30%. In the Sandstorm, it's like having a built-in life orb for things like Earthquake, Iron Head, Rock Slide, Stone Edge, what have you. And then Mold Breaker is a really useful ability outside of Sand and in Sand as well, you know, in case people don't see it coming. Uh, Mold Breaker, it, the Pokemon moves effects and ignore the abilities of the other Pokemon. So, say for example, Rotom Wash. It has the Levitate ability. Earthquake is going to run through Rotom Wash because it ignores the Levitate and it hits it super effectively. Um... For instance, something like Snorlax or Gligar that typically have the immunity ability. You can click Toxic on those and the immunity ability will not take effect. Toxic goes through. You can set up Stealth Rocks on something like a uh, Mega Sableye that typically would Magic Bounce it back. You can Toxic that as well. So that's a very useful ability to have breaking through um, any abilities that would technically hinder your moveset otherwise. So um, as far as offense goes, typically straightforward. Um, you know, I, I've seen people run special defensive variants before. I've seen people run AV variants before. Obviously, with, like, Sand Rush, Life Orb, Swords Dance is really cool. Um, it's got access to, you know, Brick Break, Drill Run, Earthquake's obviously the primary move that you want to go for here. You know, base 100 power move. It's Stab, hits 100% of the time. Really awesome. Um, it gets Home Claws for setting up as well in case you don't want to run Swords Dance for whatever reason. Iron Head, Poison Jab. Rapid Spinning is very nice. It's a very solid spinner. It can also serve as a Hazard Setter as well by setting up Stealth Rocks. That's something that I did want to have um, on the team. So not only like a very reliable Stealth Rocker, but a very reliable Rapid Spinner as well. Stuff like Rock Slide, Shadow Claw. Um, obviously, like I said, it sets up the Stealth Rocks, gets X Scissor. Um, I don't think anything else here. Typically, you see like four to six moves ran on X Drill. Like Magnet Rise is a really cool tech move that it could possibly use. Smart Strike is also cool. Stomping Tantrum. Um, power doubles at the last user's move last failed. So you could do, like, pr double protect into Stomping Tantrum or something for, like, some secret tech. But, like I said, typically you see just a few handful of moves on extra drill, and it serves a very niche purpose of, like, offensive pressure. Also being able to shrug off certain special defensive hits. Um, like I said, I know it's special defense and defense. You know, 60 and 65 
aren't too much, but it, like its HP stat is just very overwhelming. Like 110 HP is incredible to have in a mod like this. So it makes it very good for, like I said, you know, life orb. Obviously, the more HP you have, like you're going to be better off with, you know, going for substitutes and things like that as well. Um, overall, I really, I really like Exodra. I think it's really good. And the reason I went with that is because coming on the way back, uh, I saw Hella here. Hella, our Mega Tyranitar. She is the Mega for the team. Hella was at a Tier 2 Mega pick, which what that means was that it gave me an extra 40 points left in my draft. And the reason I went for this is because Tyranitar is a Tier 1 Pokemon. Costs 180 points if I were to grab that as a free agent or whatever. In my free points, I should say. Uh, whereas Ty Mega Tyranitar gave me an extra 40 points back. And did literally everything that I needed Tyranitar to do. The the only the only um, downside to this is that obviously I can't run like Smooth Rock. You know I could run Smooth Rock Tyranitar. Other than that, you know this does everything that I would want from a regular Tyranitar. So um, really great stats. Look at 100 HP, 164 attack, 150 defense, 95 special attack, 120 special defense, 71 overall in speed. Uh, brings us to 135 with a speed boost in nature or something like Jolly, maybe even a Timid set as well. Does have the Sandstream ability. So now this is increasing not only our ground weakness, but our fighting weakness as well. But uh, Mega Tyranitar is awesome. I've always wanted to use Mega Tyranitar. I've always wanted to use regular Tyranitar in League format as well. And when I saw this as a discounted Mega, I thought to myself, it was either this or Mega Manectric. Both of those were Tier 2 Megas. And I was like, I can grab Extra Drill and Mega Tyranitar. I can use Extra Drill outside of Sand, but I wanted to make sure securely that I grabbed that. So even though people might say like, oh, Mega Tyranitar went first two rounds overall, like th th that was in my mind. Like I wanted to make sure I could secure a very offensive sand core ahead of time. And my team does very well without sand, I feel like as well. So um, as access to move, like like I said, Aqua Tail, Brick Break, Crunch, you know, you see you can run special with things like Dark Pulse, Dragon Claw, Dragon Dance, a very common setup move that you see on Mega Tyranitar, you raising the attack and the speed by one stage, which is awesome. Uh, has Dragon Pulse, can phase things out with Dragon Tail, Earth Power and Earthquake. In case, you know, we face a Bulu team and we don't want to go for Earthquake, Earth Power dodges the whole thing and goes for that as well. Um, Fire Blast, Fire Fang, Fire Punch, Flamethrower, Focus Blast, Foul Play, you know, Home Claws set up as well. Um, Ice Beam, Ice Fang, Ice Punch, Iron Head, Low Kick, Outrage, Power Up Punch as well. Pursuit Trapping, Psychic Types is really, really nice. Psychic and Ghost-type Pokemon, Roar, you can phase things out on Hazards as well. Rock Slide, Seismic Toss, it can set up rocks as well. It takes the rocks pressure off of Excadrill. Superpower, Surf, Taunt User, Thunderbolt, T-Wave, Toxic. It's a very, very good Pokemon. I feel like a lot of people over the years, like as newer Pokemon have come out, um, just kind of sleep on it, honestly. I feel like it's I feel like it's almost a forgotten treasure. And I, I do want to do my best to kind of show Mega Tyranitar is a capable Mega. Is it worth something like a round one pick overall? No, because there's obviously Megas that can outperform Mega Tyranitar, like can just like blow them back, like Mega Lopunny. With a high jump kick, all of a sudden, Mega Tyranitar, who's she? But I feel like Mega Tyranitar does have potential in League format, and I do want to showcase that. I feel like it does have a lot of, like I said, I feel like just looking at its stats overall, I feel like it does have a lot of potential. Um, I feel like setting the sand for Excadrill as well, but I also think like a Dragon Dance variant, I think like perhaps, you know, the right build variant can surprise some people, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, coming back around, so obviously we talked about the weaknesses that Excadrill and Tyranitar both share. We've got a ground weakness, we've got a fighting weakness. Uh, we've got a water weakness, ice weakness, grass weakness right now. Um, there's a few weaknesses coming between Exodrill and Tyranitar that are very easily patchable, and I wanted to go for Latios. Latios got drafted, so, uh, oh no, I had to grab the more offensive one. We grabbed Latios here on the way back. Wintergreen the Latios is here. Uh, I've used Latios, I believe, Season 5 of the GBA? 5? Season 5, when I did Infernape and Suicune and Latios? Yeah, I think that's what it was. So, uh, Latios is a really, really cool Pokemon. Dragon Psychic. The Levitate ability makes it immune to ground-type moves um, that otherwise can really, really hurt Excadrill and Mega Tyranitar. We've got a Fighting Resist now as well. Um, you know, obviously the common stats, Fire, Water, um, Grass, Electric, all of those. You know, we've got the Electric Immunity, obviously, in Excadrill, but it resists all of those hits as well. Uh, we do have, you know, obviously now a Ghost Weakness. We have a Bug Weakness. But Exodrill really doesn't care about bugs, and Tyranitar really doesn't care about ghosts all that much. So they do kind of pair together very nicely, I feel like. Um, Latios is an incredible Pokemon, has access to setup between Calm Mind and Dragon Dance, has Defog. Um, ton of coverage moves available, Earthquake, Energy Ball, Ice Beam, you know, Light Screen. It's got Memento support for setting up with something like, you know, Gyarados, setting up with something like, you know, Cloyster that you'll see, that you see later on above the screen that I can talk about. But it's got good... Um, it's got good support, you know, obviously we've got Tailwind, we can Thunder Wave things, we can Toxic things, we can Trick things as well. Very, very good Pokemon, a Pokemon that can also abuse the the fact that uh, if it is given a Z-Crystal or not. And spoilers, Latios is one of the Pokemon that I chose to have 
to use the Z crystals. And as far as Z crystals go in this draft, um, you can only use offensive crystals. So if somebody drafts Coma O, I believe Dan drafted Coma O. He can't use Clangorous Soul Blaze. It's an Omni boosting move. No Omni boosting moves. Um, just offensive ones. So like Z Draco, Z Earthquake, things like that. And nothing really likes a, a, a devastating Drake from from uh, from a modest Latios or a timid Latios even. Nobody likes a Z uh, Z Draco Meteor, Z Outrage if we decide to run a physical set one week. But uh, good bulk overall, 80, 80 base HP, 90 attack, 80 defense, 130 in special attack, 110 speed, and 110 special defense. 110 speed is nice. Obviously, there are some things in the format that do outspeed it. But it does give us um, a really, really good Pokemon for outspeeding those pesky base 100s that tend to get drafted. Things like Jirachi, things like Victini, you know, all that good stuff. Um... Pairing up with Latios, being able to help nerf some fighting weaknesses here. I didn't necessarily grab a fighting uh, resistance, but what I did grab was something that I, I felt like was really, really good. Um, fire types are always fun to have in League formats, and I've always... Arcanine is my mascot, for those of you guys who do not know. Um, I typically don't bring branded mascots anymore, but um, Arcanine kind of fit the bill here. You know, Arcanine's got a really, really good spread. 90 base HP, 110 attack, 80 defense, 100 special attack, 80 special defense, and 95 speed. Um... With three really good abilities, you've got the Intimidate ability, it lowers the Pokemon's attack by one stage on the switch in. Flash Fire uh, gives us a fire immunity to the team, which otherwise hurt Excadrill. And the Just Fight ability, so if we're hit by a Dark Type move, it does raise our attack by one stage. So something like Latios not wanting to take a Dark Type move, now all of a sudden Just Fight Arcanine can take that. Typically you don't see it ran, but it is an option that we do have. Um, it's got awesome It's got awesome coverage, I feel like. It does provide a, it does provide a good offensive role in case Extra Drill or Tyranitar doesn't fit the bill with access to moves like Close Combat, Outrage, Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, um, a few other moves. It's got priority and extreme speed as well, which is really nice. It does have the option to set up with agility. It does also have a good spread to be a special attacker with things like Flamethrower and Heat Wave. Um, Iron Head is also there for fairies. Morning Sun for the recovery is very nice. It does get access to the move Burn Up. Um, it can set up Reflex, which I actually just found out right now. Will of Support is always nice. Roar for phasing out over hazards is always good as well. There's Burn Up. There's Burn Up right there. Become a user type. Use, uses Fire type. Becomes typeless. Must be Fire. Yeah, so it has access to Burn Up right there, like I said. Um, fire Spin, things like that. I mean, Laser Focus. Next turn, user will hit with a critical hit. That's really cool. Um, I'm just looking there. Solar Beam and stuff like that for like a Sunny Day thing. I know Dan drafted like some Sun, so Solar Beam on Arcanine might not be too bad, but it does provide a little bit of a pivotal role. Um, I like it for the Intimidate support. I like it for the bulk. I like it for Willowis support. I like it for the priority as well. Um, I think it can serve really nicely. And one thing I like about Intimidate is having a good Intimidate core. And next up here, we have Gyarados, actually. We grab Gyarados on the way back. Gyarados uh, having a four times weakness to Electric, unfortunately, but being immune with the Excadrill and the uh, resistance in Latios. I'm not too concerned about that. It uh, does also give us another fighting type immunity or a fighting type resistance to pair with Latios here. Gyarados is a really cool mon. It's got two awesome abilities in League format. It's got the Intimidate, which we talked about with Arcanine. That Intimidate core works really nicely for physical threats. Uh, it also has Moxie, where if it does KO the Pokemon, it does the attack does rage one stage, allowing it to be a very good sweeper. Um, it has access to moves like Aqua Tail, Avalanche, Body Slam, Crunch. Um, Dragon Dance setup is really cool. Special, especially, you know, you got access to Dragon Pulse, phasing out with Dragon Tail, Earthquake, Fire Blast, Flamethrower. It can use Hurricane. I mean, my goodness. Um, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Ice Fang. Things like that. It can roar out through subs like that. It can roar out, phasing out over hazards like that. Um, has access to Stone Edge as well. Um, taunt user. It can also use T-Wave. It can toxic things as well. Has access to Waterfall. So um, it's a pretty... I'm just double checking down here. Make sure there's nothing that I missed as far as like a really good move that I wouldn't want to sleep on. Making sure, making sure. Z Thunder, Z Zap Cannon, things like that. So Gyarados is a really cool setup, Mon. It does give us a little bit. Um, so as you can see here... 95 base HP, 125 attack. So special attack isn't too much. Like base 60, like I, as much as I joke about like the Z Hurricane all of a sudden. Um, 125 attack and 100 special defense actually gives it a really good special presence as far as a defensive Pokemon goes. Um, 81 in speed isn't too crazy, but after a Dragon Dance or two, it really doesn't start to threaten the opposing team, especially once, you know, you start getting boosts in the attack as well with Dragon Dance. Things like Waterfall, things like Earthquake. Um, it does really appreciate a Z Crystal, which is why Gyarados is actually my other Z Cat, and we're able to pick two Mons that are access that can access the use of Z crystals outside of Latios. Gyarados is really cool. Being able to hit things with the supersonic sky strike from Gyarados really, really hurts an enemy team. You know, you really got to plan for like a flying resist for that. Um, as far as it goes, you know, Hydro Vortex, um, Tectonic, Tectonic Rage, Tectonic Rage is that the ground? Is that the ground one? Z Earthquake, something like that. Z Crunch, Black Holy Cliffs, other things like that are really good for League format. 
Um, pairing off the Firewater Grass Core here, I thought it'd be really cool to use Breloom. I feel like Breloom's always one of those Pokemon that you have to plan for. I feel like knowing a Breloom, you know, you're like, oh, he won't bring the Breloom, but what if he does? I find, at least when I'm building, Breloom is one of those Pokemon that you always have to look forward to. And, um, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's going to do well. Uh, the abilities that it has, it's got effects for, um, which obviously if somebody touches it, it's got a 30% chance of, you know, having a status after that. Poison Paralysis or Sleep. Poison Heal is really cool. Uh, heals my max HP by 1 8th every turn. 12% gain from, like, a Toxic or Poison Heal set. Technician. Technician boosts some of its moves, such as Mock Punch, such as, you know, Bullet Seed, Rock Tomb, other moves like that. You can sometimes see an offensive set with, like, a Life Orb SD set. But um, one of the things that I like about it is that, obviously, it does have access to Technician, Stab, and Bullet Seed, and Mock Punch priority. And Mock Punch is really nice. Um, it can run things like Bulk Up. It can have Drain Punch for the recovery. It can run Seed, which is really cool. Um, power Up Punch for setting up. Um, we talked about, oh, Spore, that's another thing, you know, 100% chance to put something to sleep, that's really awesome to have, um, at least I think so, uh, has reliable recovery in the synthesis as well, outside, so you can run, like, a toxic orb poison heal set with synthesis, and, like, just kind of sit in front of shit for a while, um, outside of that, like, it's got counter, like, what else do we have here, what else do we have here, I'm just saying if there's anything else that it could have, you know, like, we talked about the technician boosted rock tomb is really cool, speed control is really nice with that, because it's not the most... Um, not the most powerful mon. Um, Wake Up Slap with Spore might be a cool tech set that somebody might run. I don't know if I'll run it. I don't know if I'm in enough to run it. But I think this Firewater Grass Core turns out really, really nice. Um, I think the weaknesses are patched up. You know, obviously it has the Psychic and the Flying Weakness. In that, that Mega Tyranitar obviously doesn't care about a Flying type or a Psychic type, mind you. So I think everything's kind of coming along right now. Um, I talked a little bit about Fairies early on. I talked about how you want a good Steel type to kind of pressure Fairies. Well, with all the Fairies going, things, you know, like, um... Sylveon, things like Gardevoir, things like um, Whimsicott, things like Klefki. You know, there weren't too many fairies left. And typically, like, offensive fairies have never really been my thing. Offensive fairies have never really been my thing. So I went with a more defensive fairy. I went with Aromatis. Uh, Cabaret is here. She is going to be uh, hopefully a little bit of the glue to the team. You know, we talked about Latios and um, Latios, Arcanine, and Breloom all have reliable recovery in Morning Sun, or in Recover, Morning Sun, and Synthesis, respectively. And Wish Passing with Aromatis is going to be really nice. It can Wish Pass into something like Excadrill. It can Wish Pass into something like the uh, Mega Tyranitar. Having a Pokemon that has Heal Bell is also really cool, because typically with things like, you know, uh, Excadrill and Mega Tyranitar, you want to Will-O-Wisp those. You know, in order to wear down things like Arcanine, you want to click Toxic. In order to hinder Gyarados, you know, same thing with that. You want to will o but you want to Toxic it, put it on a timer. So having a Pokemon that can use Heal Bell is really nice. Having a Pokemon with as much bulk as it does is really nice as well. 101 base HP, 90, excuse me, 89 in special defense, 72 in defense. Does give it a lot of bulk to work with. Um, as far as its moveset goes, you know, it's got Aromatherapy. It can set up with things like Calm Mind. A Disable set could be really cool to run as well. Um, Flash Cannon, I'm, I'm blown away by Flash Cannon right now. Heal Bell is something that's nice. You know, it can go for Light Screen. It can, does not get Reflect. So it can set up that one screen at least. Can magic coat things back and you can set up a nasty plot. It can set up a trick room, maybe like a nasty plot trick room, aromatis, psychic, psy shock. Oh, it does set up reflect. I'm dumb. Light screen reflect. So it can set up screens as well for helping stuff like that. Um, like I said, wish pass, it can set up a trick room, toxic things as well. Um, let me just make sure there's no other moves that I want to speak on really quickly. Uh Psych Up could be really cool. Um, but other than that, yeah, Torment could be another thing if like Pokemon are setting up on us, but that's very niche. So uh, it does provide a little bit of defensive glue to the team, which is what I like about it. It is able to heal up all of our other Pokemon um, in a sense in case they aren't able to. Shrugs off a lot of physical attackers, things like, you know, uh, common threats like Garchomp, common threats like Infernape. You know, even though they do get moves like Poison Jab and Iron Head, um, you know, Aromatisse really can just kind of sit in front of it and wish off and Moonblast and, you know, really threaten those things as well. So I really like Aromatisse. I'm looking forward to using it. Um, so far, like I said, the only Pokemon that I've used previously in leagues. So we used... Excadrill in PGL one season, and that season we went to the championships and lost to T-Train. And then we used Latios in Season 5 of the GBA, which was like my comeback season to the GBA, I felt like, which was really good. Season 5? Season 5? Yeah, Season 5. Season 5, yeah. Which is when I actually like started doing better in Draft League format, I feel like, at least with the GBA. So, uh, it's shooting by what we've used so far, I mean, it's really good. Um, I like it. Something that I wanted to grab here, uh, a little bit more special pressure outside of Latios um, and kind of aromatis one little bit more special pressure and a spin blocker and another ground immunity is really nice so we grab miss magia six senses here six senses also shiny i can't believe i didn't do that wow um six senses here 
the Miss Magius with the Levitate ability, giving it a ground immunity, which is nice. Again, kind of pet champ the ground weakness between Excadrill, Tyranitar, and Arcanine. Um, blocks in case I get up hazards, in case someone's go for rapid spin. Every Pokemon in their mother now has Defog, so something to keep in mind is that, you know, Pokemon can probably run Defog. But uh, in case they do have a spin block or something like a Don Fan team or something like a Hitmonchan team, you know, we can take that. Uh, HP, attack, and defense, base 60s across the board. Nothing special there. Special attack, special defense, and speed of 105 is really nice. It still gives us that speed tier that lets us outspeed base 100s, um, which is super cool. Uh, has Call Mind support for setting up. Has Nasty Plot. Dark Pulse, Dazzling Gleam. Has Destiny Bond, which could be very, very nice. Foul Play for things setting up. Another Heal Bell user, which is very nice. Hex in order to pr you know help promote um, any of status ailments that we are able to inflict. Uh, Magic Code for for bouncing back non-damaging moves is really cool. It also has Memento support in case something like Exadrill, in case something like Tyranitar, Latios wants to set up. Memento on that is really nice. Um, it has Pain Split for recovery. Perish Song is cool. Power Gem for a stab, or for, for not a stab, for a special rock type move is cool. Shadow Ball, Shadow Snake for priority is also there. Sucker Punch for priority is there. It's a taunt user. It can Thunder Wave, it can Trick, it can Toxic, and it can will o -Wiz. It can provide three types of very common status elements, which I really like in League format. Having access to those does allow me to switch things up. Um, double checking here. Grudge. Ooh, that might be some tech. Grudge might be some tech. Inferno, 100% chance to burn the target. Like, I don't think I'd ever use Inferno. Mystical Fire is probably the move I'd use instead of Inferno. I don't have, you know, my, I'm not that, I'm not that well endowed that I'm going to go do that. Psych Up could be pretty cool. Ominous Win for the boost, for the lulls, I suppose. Um, skill Swap could be very, very nice. Things like that. It can also use Trick Room and things like that as well. So, I think it's a really cool Pokemon offensively. I think it also has really good defensive support with being able to spam those moves. The speed tier that it sits at allows for support to be able to hinder those more offensive mons so they maybe can't KO. And typically something like a Culverberry or a Cassiberry, if that's the Ghostberry if I'm thinking of. You know, you can run on that to kind of be more of a supportive role in that. Um, next up here, I really don't like doubling up on types. And you guys obviously see on the layout that I've already doubled up on types. But I really don't like doubling up on types. But we talked, and Cloyster's really cool. Cloyster's a really cool mon. Um, I feel like it's one of those Pokemon that kind of gets forgotten about in drafts. I Last time I saw it drafted was, I think, Cooper drafted it in the GBA. But um, I haven't seen Cloyster drafted recently. It's got the Shell Armor ability, can't be crit. It's got Skilling ability, multi-hits, always hit max times. Overcoat, I am immune to powder moves. I am immune from the Sandstorm as well, which is nice to have on my Sand team. So Overcoat can be really nice. Um, really, so it's another spinner, so it does take pressure off of... Excadrill for spinning, Latios for defogging. I think Gyarados also gets defog. No, I lied. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Back to this. Back to this. No more Gyarados getting defog talk. But it's another spinner, which is really cool. Um, people might not expect that as a rapid spinner. It sets up spikes. It can set up toxic spikes. It did get the new buff with liquidation in Ultra Sun and Moon, which helps provide for Shell Smash support. And what Shell Smash does is it raises the attack. The special attack and the speed stage all by plus two, and then it drops special defense and defense by one stage. Typically, you see like a, sh a shell smash white herb set to bring back my negative stats. Um, you can also see like a focus sash set as well. So, something to note does have priority in ice shard. You know, it does have icicle spear to abuse the skill link as well as rock blast. Liquidation is a very nice move to also use now as stab being brought in with that as opposed to razor shell. Um, with the uh, with the shell smash feature that it does have. Other than that, it's got really good defenses. 180 base defense. That that's really scary. That's really scary. You know, it can boom on people as well. Um, poison jab. It can run. Like I said, it's a rapid spinner. It can set up reflect. There's the shell smash and rock blast that I was talking about. Spikes, toxic spikes. You can see. You can even run a special mix set with something like surf as well. Aqua ring for recovery. Um, it can go for barrier. Barrier cloister. The tech. The tech. Frost breath always crits. Things like that. Icy wind for speed control is another one. Um, smart strike. It has smart strike. So smart strike can go with the um, with with shell smashing. If somebody has like a fairy type as their wall, you go for smart strike and boom, you're done. I mean, you go for poison jab as well. Spike cannon. I don't think I'd ever run spike cannon, but it does obviously abuse the skill link ability that it does have. Things like that. Twin needle. I didn't know it got twin needle. Twin needle's cool. Whirlpool is cool for trapping. Whirlpool toxic or something like that. So. Um, yeah, Cloyster's really cool. Cloyster adds a little bit of more physical defense. I do double up on the electric weakness right now, um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, now with Cloyster, you know, we don't need to bring Gyarados because we do have a water type in case we feel like, you know, something else is better as a water type that week and we have Cloyster, we can kind of switch in and out. Um, and now I repeat myself doubling up on typings. I really don't like doing that, but Golbat also fit the bill here, and I have a hatred for Golbat because Golbat is always bad in Let's Plays. 
But I'm hoping that Golbat does well in league play. Golbat's really cool. Eviolite obviously boosts its defense and its special defense by an extra 50%, which is very nice. It's got not a bad speed tier with base 90. Um, inner Focus and Infiltrator. Inner Focus, we don't have to worry about being flinched. Infiltrator, we go through subs, we go through screens, all that good stuff. Um, is that how it is? Yeah, ignore substitutes and all the screens. That's literally what I just said. So, uh, solid defogger, solid fighting resist, solid ground immunity. Solid special wall for a lot of common threats. You know, Poison Flying does have some fair resistances, and the common weaknesses that it does have with other Pokemon, we do patch up in a nice defensive core as well. Um, it's got Recovery with Roost. Like I said, it has access to Defog. Hazing is really cool for setup sweepers in case they can't knock us out. We get a Haze off. Um, nasty Plot for Nasty Bat. Don't remind me. Um, it does have U-Turn. Super Fang is really nice. It does damage equal to half, so if there's like a Slowbro or a Suicune in front of us or something, Super Fang can help out with that. Because it's a Poison-type user, I always land my Toxics every time. Um, I never have to worry about missing that. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Pretty sure that's how that works. Um, U-Turn is really nice for the Momentum. Whirlwind is really nice for phasing things out over Hazards. We do now have Rocks, Toxic Spikes, and Regular Spikes on the team, which will be nice. Um, Zen Headbutt, I don't know. It does have Tailwind support as well. Just double check and make sure I didn't miss anything as far as the moves go. You guys know how it goes by now. Hypnosis. Um, pluck. Um, doesn't get Sandstorm. Doesn't get Sandstorm. So, but yeah, so I think I think it's a really cool Pokemon defensively. I think it can provide some really good support for like offensive fighting types that want to do something. Because even with, uh, especially with the Eviolite, you know, it does create a problem for offensive Pokemon that do want to come in and think like, oh, I'll go for a Thunder Punch on Golbat. No, you won't. I have Excadrill, or I have, you know, you guys see the Electivire's next. So, I think it patches up together really well. Um, last turn came around, and there were a few Tier 5 Electric types we could grab. There was, I was thinking about Emolga, but I was like, I really don't need three Flying types on the team. Um, I was thinking about Electabuzz, because it's fast, but I was like, I'd really prefer an Immunity. I was going to go Zebstrika. Um, Electivire just kind of sounded cool. Um, Electivire is the motor drive ability, which raises the speed by one stage of hit by an electric move, and it does give us the immunity, which is nice, outside of, like, Mold Breaker Mega Ampharos, which I don't think was drafted. Um, as far as coverage goes, um, good special and physical coverage. Brick Break, Cross Chomp, Earthquake, Facade, Fire Punch, Flamethrower, Focus Blast, uh, Hammer Arm, Ice Punch, it can set up screens, uh, Power Punch, Party and Quick Attack, Psychic, Rock Slide, it's a Taunt user, it can Thunder Wave Toxic, Bolt Switch for Momentum as well. Thought it was just a really cool mod just to add together. I think electric types are always good in league format. I do wish it was a little bit faster with that base 95 speed. If we brought it up to like base 100 speed, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, Mega Electivire for 4th Gen Remace. But um, overall, Electivire was a really good tier 5 discount pick for an electric type Pokemon. I think it did really well. I was shooting for something like Electros just to have like a no weakness. But unfortunately, that was nabbed. So I love the Electivire here. I like it. I think it's going to fit the team really nicely. I think the electric community helps out. With the, uh, the, the other reason I wanted the Electric Immunity is just because of the, the Electric Weakness that we do have between Gyarados, Cloyster, and um, Golbat. Even though we do have an Immunity in Excadrill and a Resistance in Latios, I still kind of figured it'd help. And like Mega Tyranitar with the Sand is still pretty bulky, so it can probably take a Thunderbolt. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I have the Immunity, which is why it was kind of a toss-up between that, Emolga. Was it Emolga? Yeah, Emolga or Zebstrika. Those are the three that I was tossing up. But yeah, this is uh, this has been the uh, draft analysis for the APA. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below if you guys made it this far. Of course, feel free to leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed. Um, we just did Detroit Stealing Shirts. If you guys want me to bring those back for a little bit, let me know in the comment section down below as well. All that being said, I will catch you guys Saturday. We're going to have our Week 1 team builder going up against Mewtwo Fan Nate and the New York Noibats. He will be our Week 1 opponent going into APA. I'm really looking forward to it. He's a good friend of mine, and it should be a good time. So all that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Be great. Do great. And I'll talk to you all soon. Later.